Hey everyone, my name is Jim. We're here for week number three of the UBL season six, and we're up against Dr. Slacking and his Forest Green Snowvers. Uh, I've played him uh, with many a team name, and this one is new to me, but we have played Dr. Slacking quite a few times in the past, and they've always been really, really strong matches. I'm really excited for this one. We have teams that match up really interestingly against each other, so we both have a lot of mods that match up very well against each other, and it's just going to be a matter of whatever we bring and whatever we leave on the bench, because these types of matchups are really difficult to kind of counterplay. There are a lot of interesting inter interactions here. He doesn't really have any strong fear resists, and the ones that do are primarily his steel types, which Victini can take advantage of quite a bit, so I'm going to try to click Dazzling Gleam as much as possible there, and then Zarud just kind of does a lot because he, he doesn't have a ton of fantastic fighting resists. Obviously, he has pretty solid ones, but they don't deal with Zarud terribly well. So if I can catch Zarud on some predictions, then that's going to be an, a really interesting time. And I do think this is going to be a really strong match for Zygar to come in because he only has 1,000 arrows resist, and everything else, I'm pretty confident that I can two-hit being a banded Zygar set. So that's going to be really strong if I can pivot into it really, really well. And you do have a number of defensive pivots to try to make that happen okay so we are here and uh it looks like we will see the obama snow straight off the bat so obama snow flygon blaziken swampert azumarill and uh what is that thing called um kangaskhan okay so right off the bat right off the bat azumarill is the only fighting resist which is interesting for my for my zarud no Latias is obviously huge. No Steel type at all is crazy. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. No Tyranitar. Wow, no Tyranitar is humongous. No Tyranitar blows me away. No Tyranitar blows me away. It also means that he has a relatively slow team. So this fastest Mon on the team is the Flygon. Interestingly enough. So, I don't know. I really want to lead off with Zarud here. I do have a number of lead options, but I do think Zarud is the best option I have available to me. But yeah, just a lot of interesting choices here. Let me think this through. So Swampert's obviously going to be a huge problem for my Victini. Um, brings both the water types. Uh, but I deal with them decently well. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting not to see the Latias or the Tyranitar. I felt like the Tyranitar was really, really strong against me. But obviously, the Zarud makes things kind of difficult. Um, Zarud's going to be clicking close combat a lot, I think. But regardless, I'm. this is just very, very interesting. It does lead off with the Flygon. Now, this thing could be... Could 100% be Scarfed. Um, even if it's not... Even if it's not, I kind of just want to go into, I really do need this for the blaze again. I could lose to the blaze again if this thing goes, well, I think, I think Victini is always going to be the kind of the backup check to it, but I really don't think I can give up too much damage on the Zarud this early on, especially if it's a scarf turn. turn. Um, I think Doc would be the type to know that I want, that I like leading off Zarud just in general. But, regardless, let me just see here. Flygon, uh, on a U-turn, yeah, it goes into the bomb stone, that's totally fine. And it's going to counteract my, my leftovers, which might be exactly what he expected to do here. Um, but let's see here, it brings me down to 135. 135. That's 22 points of damage. This thing is just is not entirely is not entirely max attack on the flygon. So it's probably scarfed. It's almost definitely scarfed. I can get out of here though. I can get out of here and I probably just go into the duck for now. So the duck was mainly here for the duck was mainly here for... Oh, it could be a special Flygon, right? It could be... It could be like a... Like an... Like a Timid Flygon, potentially? Timid Scarf? I click Teleport every time, I think. 
but I really did want to click Thunderwave there. Yeah, so this was mainly here for the Latias. It doesn't really have many special attackers here, so Porygon is kind of free to, to just do what it does. It can be the dedicated switch into the to the to the Obama Snow, and I think that the Obama Snow is gonna be something that I have to switch into pretty frequently here. I would be Does a draw. Interesting, interesting. Do we see the blaze again? That is the Kangaskhan. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, okay, let's see. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to either bring in the Zarud or the King or the Victini. Kangaskhan. I'm going to have to try to tell some things here. Close combat actually KOs actually has a chance to KO max defense. It's a 50-50 chance, but it's not one that I feel like I can take this early on in the match. Now, if I go into Victini here... Yeah, Victini Blue Flare just does damage to everything here, right? Potentially baits in the Swamper, potentially baits in the Azumarill. But I think we can tell some things based off of damage no matter what happens here. I think. Uh, there's the leftovers, which is to be expected. This thing, I don't know, this thing could be so many different things here. I'm going to try to do my best to speed calc this. It goes for protect as I go for the blue flare. That's very interesting. It's very, very interesting. Could go into the swamper straight away. Could be confident enough that he takes the blue flare and stays in here. Um, if the swamper comes in... I don't know, man. Is it even worth making this play? Um, I think I should do something off of this play and click U-turn here. Because Izumarill is also a possibility, and Izumarill kind of messes me up quite a bit. I think... I think the Izumarill comes in, and I think I go out into... I think I go out into Zarud. I mean, could this thing be Sap Zipper? I'd be so surprised. If this thing is Sap Zipper. But the fact that it came in on the... On the Victini makes me think not. But I don't know. I have no idea. It does allow me to go into, into Zarud. What's this thing called? Um, Azumarill. I think he makes the play into Obama Snow. And I think I click U-Turn. It is Leftovers. I think he always has to respect the power whip here. And I think I think the Obama Snow is here for that. Interesting. Let's me get the play off the play rough off. So this thing could very well be Zap Zipper. I still don't know. I still don't know. Um Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to make this play. I'm gonna try to make this play. Goes for the skull, okay. So yeah, it's it's almost definitely Sap Zipper. That feels confirmed to me. And it kinda makes me want to click Super Fang, in all honesty. But I think I have to not do that. The Flygon could also be defog as well. Oh, and I think it outsped me. I think it popped the leftovers first. I, I I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention until until I had already clicked the move. So yeah, if, if he has a KO if he wants it. He has the KO if he wants it. But he should also know that I know how... Oh no, I, I'm faster. Okay, I'm, I'm all over the place. I apologize. I apologize. But okay, I think we can assume that this is a defensive Azumarill. I think we can assume that this is a defensive Azumarill. Uh, energy ball. And uh, energy ball doesn't quite KO. Oh, this thing is snap zipper anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not a thing I can do. Uh, so let me think here. I think I just have to make this play. I think I volt switch out into. 
I can't full switch out on Porygon because this thing could still have knockoff. Knockoff is really not ideal for me. So I Volt Switch here. Hmm. I'm into Flygon or into it's a Swampert. That's fine. I think that's fine. He could try to get rocks up of his own. But uh I have to imagine. I have to imagine that I'm able to Yeah, let's just do this for now. I don't think I can I can really stop the rocks, but Wearing down the Swampert is going to be important here. And the rocks are really going to put a dent into my overall game here, but... It, it felt... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should have expected the, the Volt Switch and played it completely differently. Or expected the Swampert to come in and then played it completely differently. But it just felt like something I wasn't in a position to do there. I think I get toxic here. I think I get toxic here. I think I get toxic here. Um, if that's the case. Party wants to go out here. Yeah, I think I think this is the play that I make. I just I have to speed up my play quite a bit, but I just think that this thing is kind of here to soak up hits and buy me some time. Close for the flip turn, so ex explicitly not allowing me to buy uh, to buy some time here. But, I mean, what could I have done? I could have... I mean, there's not much that I could have done. Honestly. Yeah, this is just so... Interesting. Sap Sip or Zuma really does hurt me quite a bit. It slows it slows down Zerud so much here. Because I wanted this. Uh, I'm gonna... I mean, he could, he could make some crazy play. Regardless, I feel like I have to Thunder Wave. Go straight for the close combat. Okay. And now... Let me see here. And now... I think... I think this does something for me here. Do I play off of anything? The thing is, if I go... If I click Outrage... To bait in the Obama Snow... Uh, do I just click Toxic here? Yeah, the Obama Snow makes it so difficult for me. The Obama Snow makes it so, so difficult for me. Man, I think I'm kind of trapped here. I don't I don't really know what to do. I feel like I just go for this. Unless two extreme speeds can, can KO Obama Snow after rocks. Which is not crazy to think. But... Oh, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. And it's faster than me. Interesting. It could be Scarfed. If it's Scarfed, that's bad. <laughs> that's just bad. Well, Scarfed... At, at least now I know that it is Scarfed. At least now I know that it is Scarfed. But... 
here's the thing. Um, I could click Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling Gleam invites in the Azumarill. But the Azumarill is so defensive that it might... Okay, alright. I, I, I forgot about that. Does he, I mean, can he play off of that? Not really. He, does, he, he doesn't have a Fairy Resist. But I can Blue Flare now. If he wants to make any play. Based off of that. It does limit his switches if he does want to make a play off of that. He was out in the Azumarill. So, let's see here. What type of damage am I doing to a max HP Azumarill? Man, Energy Ball could pick it up. Actually, Blue Flare did more damage to, does more damage to, to this Azumarill than than does than does uh, Dazzling Gleam. But at the end of the day, he's just limiting the amount of times my, my Victini can come in and click buttons, which is incredibly strong in this position here. But I know this thing is at Sap Zipper, and I just... If this Azumarill is out of the way... If the Azumarill is out of the way... Then... If the Azumarill is out of the way... Then... Zrood clicks Close Combat just a bunch of times in a row. A bunch of times in a row. And based on that damage... Only Volt Switch KOs from here. But I think at the end of the, the day, Pain Split is always going to be the best play available to me. I think the Swampert comes in regardless. I think I just try to deal damage to the, to the Swampert here. Hmm. This is uh, not a fun way to play, but it is definitely fair. It's definitely fair here. I guess, yeah, yeah, it makes sense to want as much as much of the leftovers as you can manage here. It's probably a bad play because you can't really risk your Azumarill in this position. Azumarill is absolutely the way that he gets to gets to victory eventually, but at the same time, so is my Rotom. So it makes no sense for me to risk my Rotom at all. Um, goes into okay, okay, no, uh, yeah, no, he he made the play that he had to. He made the play that he had to. This is a leftovers. This is a leftovers Flygon. I probably wasn't the best. Yeah, it was probably really bad just to give up my my Porygon like that. But I'm really just kind of stuck here. I, I I mean I mean this match might just go to timer. I he missed the toxic or no he missed the toxic. I I land the toxic. Um, interesting. That also me. I I have to imagine, given the rest of his team, that this also has protect. Uh, so three protect mines. Probably the Kangaskhan does too. If I had to guess. If I had to guess. Do I have any counterplay to a follow-up Toxic? I don't. Not not even a little bit. I can go into this thing. Yeah, I do think this makes a little bit of sense to me here. If he chooses to click Draco, then that's just really strong. EQ Draco on, on a Toxic Protect set is really strong. Unironically. Let's run another Toxic. Does land it. And... He has to respect things, right? Uh, but this is probably a super defensive Flygon, too. So, moral of the story here is I definitely should have brought Celesteela, for sure. Excuse me, Jesus. 
I really hope that I remember to edit that out, because that is not ideal. Okay, against Flygon. Uh... I need to click Outrage here. But then Outrage just baits in the Azumarill. Uh, huh. Outrage just baits in the Azumarill. But then with the Azumarill out... I can still go into... I still can... I can still go into... Victini and wear it down. And then try for a Zerud endgame? And that never works because of... That never works because of the... Because of the blaze again. Is that a crit? That might have been a crit. No, it wasn't a crit. Okay. Does hit the U-turn. And presumably wants to go out into Obama Snow now. Which I have no counterplay to anymore. I have zero counterplay to. I think Doc is the kind of dude that would click Giga Drain in on this turn. Just especially now that he knows that I'm banded, he he would definitely click Giga Drain on this turn. Just on the assumption that actually it's it's no drawback because I never do enough damage to this Obama Snow. And then he just gains HP back with with uh with But it does allow in the the Zeru. That's an interesting point. That's an interesting point. I think he I still think he's a type of dude to click a drain in this moment. No, goes for the ice shard. That's totally fair. That's totally fair. He's in no position to have to overpredict here. He's in no position to have to overpredict here. I can go into this, and now it's no, well, I I mean, I definitely click that quickly, uh, and I definitely uh, cannot bring this in anymore, but the larger point is that, yeah, okay, okay, all right. Yeah, my team is not ideal for this type of situation here uh still blue flare is the best thing to hit his team i can only also hope that that hill ends before i go down here but letting this thing get worn down is really interesting it's still really interesting to me um but i will get off the blue flare and another blue flare will KO, but more importantly, it's now in range of of close combat, if nothing else. And that's interesting to me that that he would make this play. But here we are. Uh, at this point, the goal is to not get six would and I don't think I ever do because of close combat. Because close combat is just too strong. I think. I think. Regardless, I think I have to make the close combat play now. I think if anything, it invites in the Blaziken. I think whatever I think it has to let something drop. And whatever does drop, it allows in the Blaziken. Could it potentially be more worth it to click Darkest Lair? No, it's never worth it, I don't think. Now if this doesn't drop, then that's concerning. Okay, all right, okay, that's okay. I get 6 0 here, I think. Like, I, I, this this is no longer enjoyable. I think I just would like to leave. Uh, yeah. I don't think I KO anymore. I don't think I KO anymore. And I don't, okay. Yeah. I mean, as long as it doesn't burn, it's pretty much the same position as two seconds ago, yeah. So, it 
didn't accomplish much other than 10 points of chip, but sure, we're here. This is where we are. I would prefer this match to end. Another close combat. You do get a KO. Very poggers. Very dope. Very neat. It invites in Obama Snow. It invites in Blaziken, more importantly. I still think I have enough health on my Rotom to do something. I could potentially Volt Switch out. Um, well, no. If, if, if anything... Now Flygon is in Shadow Ball range. Uh, but this is just going to be differential here. Like, it's it's uh, it's not the most enjoyable at this point. Let's just uh, get this one done. Yeah, yeah, he knew. He knew it was up. It's fine. Um, Swamper comes in, I imagine. Well, he should know my sit. He should know that I have nothing against, oh, oh, to deal with Obama's no anymore. So that's also fine. He's gonna click protect anyway. I, I could, ha I would have to imagine he clicks protect here. If he doesn't, I'd be shocked. He could be merciful. I don't know. Okay, what do? What do? We could pain split. Let's, let's, let's give that a go. There it is. Well, that accomplished nothing because I go down to where I was and he uh, goes back to where he was. Okay. I'm just going to try to make things happen for a 4-0 and then we could call this one a day. We can officially call this one a day. Uh, the, the saving grace here would be if... Man, I swear, if he clicks Blizzard, I might just leave. Be a good drink, okay. Um, if Power Whip, and Power Whip might just do it. If the, well, it, it it has to be no. This is a this is definitely max HP, for sure, for sure. And if it's a max HP, then yeah, it's out of range. I could click U-turn just for the fuck of it, um, because if nothing else, it's just inviting in Blaze again, and at the very least, Rotom forces something if this might actually net me one more ko before the match is done so who knows oh no well no it doesn't because realistically he just brings in the place again anyway and clicks, clicks close on bat twice so it's fine this was a match um okay all right okay uh I don't quite know at this point. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, we don't KO. That's dope. This is this thing was max defensive, by the way. That's super duper dope. It's fine because we guarantee, I mean, we, we guarantee to close combat again and pick up a KO. Well, okay. If he goes into Swamper, then we don't pick up a KO. Swamper potentially takes two and then, and then that's his way. If he wants to save Preserver the 5-0, that he does it. Um, but it's not altogether necessary here. Uh, there's no reason to lock into U-turn. Yeah, okay. That's fine. We're fine. We're doing, we're doing. Is there any reason Darkest Lariat here? No, I don't think so. No. Quick click Power Whip just because it's funny. And because it'd be funny if I miss. But then if he just brings in, well, yeah, I mean, it'd be funny if he brings in the Swampert. Yeah, why not? Just in case he brings in the Swampert. Why, why not? It, it, it'd be even better if we miss. Please miss. Oh yeah, I sure. Okay, that's fair. Okay. He really needed that 5-0. Oh, okay. We, we, he doesn't KO. Poggers 4-0. Very, very Poggers.
Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, unironically, all, all I had to do was protect one more time. No, that didn't do anything. <laughs> I was thinking, was there any way he could have gotten HP back in some... Or, or no, sorry. Is there any way he could have gotten one, like, last turn of hail? And that would have been the difference, but I don't think that was ever uh, going to be a thing. But yeah, there was no way that I could have prevented this thing from coming in and just clicking with combat and uh, ending the game. It just took, for whatever reason, longer than it needed to. But that's going to be week three. It was very progress, very fun, very dope. We'll be back with more weeks of the UBL and more weeks of the ICBA. Uh, the ICBA will be on hiatus, but it will be coming back really, really soon. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Kind of out.